right. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to a round of uh, your favorite beverage and questions. It is later in the afternoon. What are we going to talk about today? Talk about things related to electrical wiring, the best way to do it, and using shrink tubing or heat shrink tubing. We'll start with the ones from Harbor Freight first. Um, I'll give you my comments on that. I'll switch over to something else I think is also a great deal. But let's get started. Let me show you the pictures of the ones that's offered out at Harbor Freight. Okay, so they sell variations of this heat shrink tubing. This is the one that people most commonly buy, and the question is, is the kit any good? It's usable, and uh, I have it in one of my cars, I mean, uh, along with a kit of tools and everything else, kind of for emergencies and stuff like that. It's okay. Now, the first thing you have to stop and think about a lot of times when you're going to use this heat shrink tubing is are you going to have to replace it? You know, are you going to want to cut it off sometime and replace it? If the answer is yes, you're better going with something that doesn't have any adhesive in it because some of these have adhesive in it for waterproofing and durability, and we'll talk about that in a second. So these are okay. I mean, like I said, in a pinch, um, they're not the best. They're incredibly thinly made, and you don't have a big assortment of them but it's a nice little maybe emergency kit if that's what you want to do. So let me show you another picture here and we'll move on. Okay, so very cheaply made, very usable. I mean, and like I said, in a pinch, this is the assortment that you get. I exploded the picture. I get a lot of questions on the forum, like, well, what sizes are in there? You know, how long are they and stuff like this. I mean, you can take a quick look for yourself. And like I said, I have one set of these, but this is not my set of choice. So let me change the picture and let me show you what I buy and the reasons why. Okay, so these are the ones that I buy. I've bought them several times now, so do the people out at the club. And the reason why, these have much thicker wall. They're not that real thin, you know, Chinese junky kind of stuff. And I know that that probably relates to the Harbor Freight stuff, but the Harbor Freight stuff, like I said, is doable in a pinch. These are much better quality. They are thicker. They also have adhesive on the inside of them and they really bond incredibly well as long as you use them correctly. And somebody said, well, what do you mean correctly? Well, let's take automotive wiring. I would strip like about an inch or so, give or take, and then I would twist the wiring together. Then I put some solder on it, and then I would let that cool down, put the shrink wrap over it, and people go, well, you can use a Bic lighter. Yes, you can, you can use a lighter. I'm not gonna say you can't, it's not the best way, but it's doable. You could also, I suppose, use a hair dryer. I have a heat gun. Okay, so I use a heat gun and I heat this evenly all the way around in a uniform way. And it tightens just like you see here in the picture above my head. That's probably the more correct way. Now, there's a lot of times when we all get in a bind and we don't do it the picture perfect way, but it still would work. On the trailer remodels and all of the things I'm doing and boat wiring and the things that you've seen in the past videos, I use a heat gun and I use it correctly like I told you by soldering the wires first. This is going to give it a much more durable connection, one that's not going to slip on you. Yes, you can use butt connectors and things like that, I understand, but when I can, I solder it, whether it's the terminals, wiring, whatever. But when it comes to the heat shrink, this is what I use and the way that I use it is I use a heat gun whenever I can with a uniform distribution of heat while it's shrinking down and tightening to the wire. And you get that much more better waterproofing and along with a heat gun, and I'll explain to you in a minute, the amount of heat controlled along with that adhesive creates this really tight bond. But it's not something you're gonna be able to slit later on, take off and replace. If that's what you want, then you don't want the adhesive kind. Um, dis okay, somebody disagrees with me, you can use you know a Bic lighter, you can use a butane torch, you can, but the thing with that is you run the risk of really burning this shielding and therefore it's not gonna, you're not gonna get that bonded use and that waterproofing that you wanted. So I disagree with you, but if that's the way that you use it, I mean, that's fine. Um, if I run out of a particular size, can I slice one, put it on, slice another, overlap and heat it? You can, and that's not the best way again to do it. The best way, of course, is to use the correct size. But yes, I've done what you're saying where I can put two of them on there and overlap them because I was in a bind and I didn't want to stop and run down to the auto store or anywhere else, I mean, and get more. So you can do that, but you know, like I said, the better way is to use the correct size. 
you know, would I or could I use this like on remodeling houses for like ceiling fan wiring and things like that? I would tell you probably not. I doubt that it really complies with code violate. Um, well, you could get into a code violation is what I meant to say. I'm not going to tell you you can or you can't. I've never used it on uh, interior house wiring or remodeling or anything like that. It's just boats, trailers, you know, different kinds of connections like that that are not, you know, inside of a house. And they're really meant anyway for DC applications, like I said, like automotive stuff, not AC things like homes and wiring of homes and, you know, 12 2 and all of that. Uh, it's just not the route I would go for home wiring. Um, well, another reason I like this kit over like Harbor Freights and others, it isn't that Harbor Freights wouldn't work. It does. Like I told you in these emergency situations and besides being real thin, you don't get enough of the correct sizes that you need. So you end up getting it and finding that a third or maybe even half of one of those kits is worthless to you and you throw it out. I went with this because if you read the five sizes up above, three eighths, one quarter, three sixteenths, one eighth, three thirty seconds, and I'll tell you the number you know that it comes with because there's varying counts in here. This seemed more than adequate for me and that I would eventually use more uh, of it than the other kits. Uh, can you use it on number four kind of wiring? You can use it on four, eight, 10, 12, even below. It has all the different sizes in here that should make it you know really easy to use. What's the length? They're about three inches. The shorter ones are about an inch and a half, I mean, give or take. But, you know, for me, they're always plenty long enough, and I always actually end up cutting them, a lot of them, before using them anyway. Um, in certain applications, can you double or triple the shrink wrap? Yeah, I suppose you can, as long as one can stretch over another. If you really feel that you need that thickness and insulation now, I might agree with you more on these thinner kits you know, like the storehouse one, I might want to double it or even triple it because they're so thin. But with these right here from Millipack, no, from Millipeak rather, I'm sorry, it's glancing up. Uh, you don't have to. They're a much thicker material, so one piece would be sufficient. Am I able to get shrink wrap in larger sizes than the ones you're mentioning? Yeah, you can. You can click on the link below. Of course, I leave the links in all my you know videos anyway in the description, and you can search. You know, I've seen them go all the way up closer to one inch. So, yeah, you can. But then again, let me give you a tip on something. If I was getting up into something that large or larger, I mean, I might want to rethink how I'm doing this. And then I would suggest to you, you should use heat shrink tape. And again, I'll try to put a, you know, a link in the description below of what I've bought and, or use high temperature, you know, silicone self sealing tape. You could use that too on something larger. So those are just some thoughts that you might want to consider. I don't know exactly what you're doing, but when I get into the larger stuff, that's, you know, that's the route that I choose to go. Uh, okay. One of the guys, you know, in the comments, uh, you know, in the forum and even out at the club said, you know, look, I don't want anything that has adhesive. I want to be able to remove it. Well, then you find something like the ones from storehouse or another brand that don't have adhesive. And then that way you're able to slice these off of there. If that's what you need to do, you don't want the adhesive then because when this stuff's on there and if you heated it right, like I told you with the blow gun, it's going to bond beyond belief. Uh, why do I keep insisting soldering is a better way to go? Well, because it is, and it gives me a much greater mechanical connection. If you're unable to do it for some reason, there's nothing wrong with crimping and using butt connectors, but whenever I can, I do the soldering because I know that I have that much more of a concrete bonded connection. And aside from the fact I know that if I solder them, they're not going to come loose no matter what. What's the recommended temperature? Well, use a Bic lighter. It's not going to matter. You know, I would get it and just, you know, heat it up that way. I don't like doing it that way, so I'm not going to sit there and go on about that. You know, a hair dryer. Yeah, you could use a hair dryer, but what the temperature is, you want to get it up to 212 or at least above 200 degrees Fahrenheit. And a heat gun will do that very easily. And they don't cost that much to have, and they come in handy for many other uses. Uh, okay, question. How many of what in the sizes comes in the pack? Three eighths, there's eight of them. Quarter inch, there's 12 of them. Three sixteenths, there's 20 of them. One eighth, there's 80 of them. And the three thirty second, there's 150. And it comes in a nice storage box. I mean, so they're easy to put away in a toolbox or in the bed of your truck or whatever you're using.
Okay, so we'll go ahead and wrap up the discussion. I mean, overall, I think this is a good product because of the adhesive inside of it, because of the wall thickness of them, and the ease of use. Ease of use meaning if you heat around this correctly, you know, with a heat gun, like I told you, the glue melts easily. It's got fantastic bonding and waterproofing. If you want to remove it over and over, then you might want to go with something like the ones from Harbor Freight or something similar. Those are not my top choice. They're super thin walled. They work okay in a pinch, like I said. All right, I'm the Home Handyman. I hope you click subscribe. You know of something better or an equal value, drop it in the comment below. But for $10.98 ships prime, this kit had a nice enough assortment in it that I know that'll last me a long time. I hope you folks have a great day. I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.